Welcome, Welcome to, to Unhinged Magi. All oh. right, we're back together. We are. But really? boy, am I glad to actually see you back over here too. I know it's good to be actually here and yep. not like trapped in a house. Yep. Oh man. So I apologize for the all the audio, video uh, quality issues. Some people complained, but I'm actually just glad that we were able to get like some content out to you guys, like while like. Dan's family was going through that quarantine transition. So exactly, yeah. I, I was I was grateful for the technology. It actually worked. Mm -hmm. We even did a live stream from my house. Did some opening fantasticness. Yep. And uh, so we've got a great video for today. Let me tell you what the video is going to be about. And it's then... about chimichangas. How many <laughs> chimichangas can we shove in our mouths at once? Now I've gotten up to six. How many have you gotten up to? Oh, six. Maybe one. One. <laughs> Maybe. Are we talking chimichanga or chimichanga? No, 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 we're talking about chimichanga, not chimichanga. Chimichanga is a big old burrito. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to try. I'm not exactly sure. So all chimichangas aside, there's been some crazy news going on right now in the world of Wall Street bets. You guys heard of it? The GME and the BB stock, which is GameStop and BlackBerry. Ooh, GameStop. I remember when I used to go to GameStop all the time. Yeah, probably not anymore because no, no. GameStop was like on its way going out of business. Yes, yes it was. Yeah, and so apparently, so in case you guys haven't heard and you've been living under a rock lately, there was a... That's Games you, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Who's Steve? <laughs> <laughs> so so there was like, there was um, GameStop was basically going out of business and there was a large hedge fund that knew that that was going to happen and then... Wall Street did what Wall Street does, which is like, hey, I'm going to profit on this person's misery. So they started shorting that GameStop stock to basically profit off it. And what shorting is, is basically when they, they say, I'm going to take money out, but I promise to buy shares later. Yep. So it's a promised buy like later on, but it's the, the long story short, you're profiting <laughs> off of the stock. Oh, go, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. you're profiting off of that stock actually dropping. Now they had already done all of these short contracts. So they were, it was like a forced buy. Like it was guaranteed they were gonna be buying it. Well, see, this is where kind of like the hero of the story, which apparently in this case was Reddit users. Yeah. <laughs> inside of a chat room called Wall Street Bets. All these people got together and there's like 2 million of them in this thread. And they all said, wow guys, if we all just go buy this, then this hedge fund, they're gonna have to buy from us. If we go buy all those shares while they're cheap, and now they have to buy from us, then they have to pay whatever price we charge. It's an interesting concept. I really actually am enthralled with it because it's literally go, you know, you've got a guaranteed sales. So it's like, you're, I, I think it's a brilliant plan. So you know the shorts were happening. You know that you have customers that are gonna come and buy from you because they have absolutely no choice. Yep. So to me, it almost seemed brilliant. I think it is brilliant. And even more than being brilliant, this is this is like the very definition of risk in the market. When all those hedge funds went out there and started shorting things, they should have had the chills at night because they should have said, wow, we have a lot of money at risk. But all these financial firms and Wall Street hedge funds and stuff, they haven't had to deal with risk for a while. They've been very bold and very arrogant. And they've been just going right into all kinds of bets and investments that they shouldn't have done. Gamble, gamble. And now what effectively happened via Reddit was... Called the, the bluff, baby. They called the bluff, effectively. Reddit users came together and said, no, We're you all don't. In. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> they, they did. That might have to be bleeped. I don't know. They went all in and they called <laughs> the bet. And now this hedge fund paid something like nearly $3 billion out to these Reddit users. And I've had people emailing me for a couple of days like, oh my gosh, look at all this money I just got. Like I wish guy, I had been a part of that. Yeah, one guy that I know, like he showed me a screenshot of his Robinhood account that was like $3,000 and now it's 12, right? Uh, just on this one trade, just on this like Wall Street bets GME, right? And like, I had no idea the magnitude this was happening. So I didn't get in on that. I missed this trade. But like, but yeah, 2 million Reddit users were all over this thing. Brilliant. Yeah, so clap to all you Reddit users. Honestly, I love it. The hedge funds, I think, deserved it. And now, by the way, like a quick side note, they're trying to go about all these legal methods to, to recover. 
They're trying to like file lawsuits. They're trying to get trains shut down. Personally, there shouldn't be any lawsuits. It's completely illegal to do this, in my yeah, opinion. It's, yeah, there's, there should be nothing illegal or wrong about what these Reddit users did. I mean, when you take a risk and the free market comes back and says, bad investment guy, <laughs> that's supposed to be the way it works, right? Yeah, yeah. So props it's to the Reddit users. Demand. You create a demand and you're a dumbass and you got caught. Yep. With your cans in the cookie jar, which shouldn't have been there in the first place. Exactly. And this is this is exactly what should be in a free market. There should always be a price to risk. If you're an investor and you come into something thinking like there's no way I could lose, there is no risk, right? And sure. you're gambling with someone else's money. Things get weird and crazy and they go completely out of any level of sandy, which is why, by the way, you have PE ratios over like a thousand for some of these stocks and stuff. It doesn't make right. any sense. So anyways, so this is what should happen in the market and it happened in a big way, but there's a bigger reason why like we wanted to cover this and talk about it. Yeah, it's because of the second announcement. There is basically a second kind of wave of this that's kind of rumbling under the waters. Yes, and I'm very interested in it because they're going after silver, metal, they're going after yep. it. And, and the reason is, is because it hasn't even followed inflationary trend in a long time. And it's been really cheap. And Too cheap. Edwin has an explanation of why it's so cheap. <laughs> okay, he can explain it better than I can. And so this isn't all just from me. Like I learned from other people that are out there. But like, here, this is the story. <laughs> learned from experts. The story is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly jam it all together, and you guys can like verify it elsewhere. Maybe we'll do links in the video or something, or below in the description. But this is the basic story of it. The basic story of it is the United States dollar used to be completely backed by gold and silver, and that has been severed in stages over the years. Well, the final stage was severed in 1971 by Richard Nixon. Therefore, the US dollar is not backed by gold and silver at all anymore. Since that point, people, the government, the US government didn't want the world not to have faith in US dollars. And so they've had a vested interest in keeping the price of gold and silver low because that makes the rest of the world think, oh, the US dollar is still a valid reserve currency. That's right, it can still buy silver at the same price it used to do. And so if anybody, anyone happened to go into the market and like shove it, <laughs> well, in this case, the banks, <laughs> yeah, banks and yeah. shove the price of gold and silver down, well, they're technically not supposed to be manipulating markets. So this other group that's part of the federal government called the CFTC, they should be going in and just crushing these guys, but they didn't. They let this go on for decades. And tell them how they did that. That's the most intriguing part. Okay. The, um, well, let me finish this first part, then I'll get to how they did it. All right. So, so banks have been busy manipulating the precious metals market, shoving the prices of precious metals lower and making a profit in the process, right? It's like JP Morgan Chase, they're making all this profit actually doing this. That's keeping the precious metals price low which keeps Uncle Sam off of their back because Uncle Sam wants the prices of precious metals to be low. So banks make a ton of money doing it. Government gets the precious metals staying low, which is what they want. And now that leads you all the way to today where you've got silver selling at the same price it was in 1970. And nothing sells at the same price it was in 1970. Look at hamburgers. Yeah. French fries. Coke. It shouldn't be that price. No, it should But it is. But it is. And so the big key takeaway is silver is the most shorted asset in planet Earth. It is the most undervalued asset in planet Earth. And it has been for decades. Now comes Reddit, this group of guys <laughs> who just proved that they can do it. So they're now announcing, they are literally saying on their message boards, hey guys, let's target silver. And I'm like, oh my gosh, man, that's taken on the bull by the horns is what yeah, that is. That is. Okay, so now how, how the manipulation happens, you wanted me to touch yeah, on that. Yeah, you need to tell them about that because that paper thing is amazing. Okay. I didn't really think that through. I didn't know how they well, did it until it's, you actually gave me that information. It's their intention that people don't think it through. And everything I'm telling you guys, by the way, is factual. I'm just laying out information that like a lot of people in other communities and videos have known about for a while. I'm just, just, I'm just kind of barfing it out right. for you. So before he talks, this is how usually supply and demand works. I have a widget. If I have a lot of widgets and you want to buy those widgets and there's only a limited supply of widgets and I sell them, then the widget price should go up as long as I run out of widgets. And eventually I will run out of widgets and I wouldn't have any widgets less. 
And then the supply, then the and, price really goes up. Yeah, exactly. So now we know how supply and demand works. If you buy my widgets, my widget goes up. If nobody wants my widgets and you give them back to me, then my widgets go down, right? My price. Now explain what they're doing. Okay, so there's there's two different like things to know about. One of them is that there's physical silver that exists on the planet and it has its price. The real, vid and the real the, widget. Yeah, the, 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 what is called bullion, physical bullion, like hold in your hand metal. The other one is a what's called a paper derivative. And the paper derivative is a contract written by somebody that says, I promise to buy that physical asset at some time in the future. That's a, that's a futures contract, right? So if you had one piece of metal and one contract, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Boom, cool. we're perfect. And that's what the banks are doing, right? Well, no, no, <laughs> not even close. So that's part of the problem. Now, part of the problem is that um, it should be well, like a one-to-one -one kind of thing. So you're like 100% back. But what it actually is these days, it moves between like 100 to one and like 500 to one. It moves in these crazy ranges, right? What, let me make that clear. So there's one guy holding a coin and there's 500 people standing in a room with a piece of paper that say they own that coin. At some point in the future, somebody is gonna buy that coin and give it to them. And the guy that's over here that wrote all those contracts is sweating bullets because he's like, oh my God, there's one coin. And there's, I wrote 500 contracts to people to say they're gonna buy it. It's a short position. So the way that the precious metals manipulation worked in a nutshell is that the banks would, well, actually, I, I forgot to explain one more piece. Uh, I have to say this so that, that otherwise it will make sense. Every other commodity on the planet, if you're talking oil, lumber, uh, frozen concentrate orange juice for people that are Dan Aykroyd fans. Pigs. Every other, every other commodity on the planet. Soybeans. The price of the commodity changes. The physical unit, the physical thing changes. And then as a reaction, the ETF, the paper stock traded price changes. So the stock traded price follows the physical. Only for gold and silver, just those. It's reversed. The banks did that on purpose, where the paper price changes, and then when people are buying the physical, the person selling them physical looks up the spot price and then says, here's how much physical, and it was plus a small adder for me. So the physical follows the paper. Now the banks did that because they can't manipulate physical. They don't have the physical, but they can manip manipulate a contract. They can make paper. And so once they got the world to accept that shift, if you're JP Morgan Chase and you want the price of silver to go down, you could say, here is a 10 million new contracts to buy silver and I'll shove those in the market. And the SLV price goes down because they made all these contracts and they shoved them in. If JP Morgan Chase wants the price of SLV to go up, they just start like letting these contracts expire or like, or like buy them back themselves. And then the amount of contracts shrinks and then the price of SLV starts going up. So they can control the supply of the contracts that all say they're going to buy the physical asset, right? So the Achilles heel in this pro this scenario is if somebody, say, Wall Street bets, bets, goes in and buys all the physical silver and there is none, there's no more, right? Well, now they can't play that game with the contracts because if people that are buying the contracts say, don't roll over my contract, I want you to deliver the physical. And if I saw the physical supply dwindling and I had a contract, I'd be the first guy in line being like, yeah, before everyone else, I, I want you to give me the physical. I see that running out. I want my contract to expire and I want the physical. Please ship it to my house, right? So that's the Achilles heel is buying all the physical of it. That's what Wall Street Bets is talking about doing right now. And that is priceless. Seriously. Like, I'm just saying. So. In conclusion, I would think that people should go out and buy at least one ounce. Yeah, get something. It's like, what is it, $36 an ounce right now? Ounce. Yeah. Get some. <laughs> Don't miss this opportunity. Some of you might have missed Bitcoin. Get some. Yeah, get it. Just, just get a couple coins. Some, some of it, right? Yeah. My gosh, something. <laughs> Don't completely miss it. Now, this is a little bit speculative. I don't know how much Reddit Wall Street bets is going to go hard at this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's all a game. Maybe it's a trick. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe they get. But is there any way anybody could go to jail for advertising this? We're not advertising. We're not selling anything. We're no. We're telling them things that already exist on the internet. We're, oh, just, okay. we're just telling our subscribers. Okay, cool. Yeah. So none of what we're telling you is inside information. It's all right out there in, in the public eye. 
we're just the ones being like, hey, wake up, go get it. <laughs> Let's get one, at least. Yeah, like maybe like a couple, like just put some. Because if it actually it. goes up to a thousand dollars, which you could, thirty six bucks, it could, it that's could go crazy. far past that even. Would that be? Would the government ever say that's illegal and start arresting people for buying somewhere? So what's interesting is the government sets up all these rules and when it comes to trading and commodities, and the government says you can do this, not you can't do this. And the history, and this happened with the uh, the Hunt brothers, when the government is like, oh my God, we're about to lose a bunch of money, things are going to get bad. The government does have a history of changing the rules and doing some things, right? Right. Um, so that does happen but like even with the hunt brothers they still had like a ton of money they still bought silver really cheap and then it the price went like in 1970 went up to 50 bucks an ounce which for then was high right and it went up to 50 but then the government stepped in and started like knocking it down and it definitely retraced and such so the government can do some things against it but they got severely beat down and it's way more public it's way more understood it would be a lot harder for them to pull off that kind of thing so is there some risk in this? Yes. Yes. Is it worth buying? But not gel time. Yeah, no, 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 nothing like that. Oh, no, no, it's more, like, sure. it's more like, would I be prevented? Would someone stop me from selling my one coin for $1,000? I don't know, maybe. But <laughs> even if that doesn't work out, I mean, it's still silver. It's still a physical asset. Is, is it going to go, if you bought it at 36, is it going to go down to $2? No, no, no. no. Silver, okay, and this is what people need to understand. Silver should be, forget all this crazy stuff. It should be like $1,000 an ounce right now. Based on inflation and its price in 1970 and the amount of it that exists, True. it should be like $1,000 an ounce right now. That, But that's the whole point. It's a suppressed asset. It is a shorted asset. It's been shorted by the banks for decades. And now you've finally got a group of investors like, we're gonna go buy it and we're gonna drive it up and we're gonna make them bleed. Man, if I was the banks, I would be like, you should do something about this. JP Morgan Chase should be dropping bricks about now. <laughs> literally, gold bricks and silver bricks. Yeah, literally. <laughs> they should be dropping bricks <laughs> over this news. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, there you guys go. There, there's your heads up. You had your Crazy warning. Craziness. Okay. Unbelievable. So, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.